You've got fatty cholesterol in your artery walls. How did that happen? Did it come from the fat you ate? Is it reversible? Here's what's going on in your artery walls. This process of putting cholesterol in your arteries didn't happen yesterday. This is the timeline of how long cholesterol or clogged arteries takes to happen in patients. When you look at how fast this happened in you, it really depends on, well, what risk factors do you have or have you had that made this happen? Looking at this list, there's several of these things that you can control. And other things like old age, <laughs> having a bacterial infection, or who your family is that you can't control. When you whittle down the list of what things you can control that create health problems, patients present and say, well, doc, how do you get better? What does getting healthy look like? Is that avocados, whole grains, and kale? Well, after seeing patients for over two decades, I recommended the high grain diets, the standard American diet for over 15 years. And during that time, they exercised their way out of a heart problem rarely. There were several patients who lost between 75 and 100 pounds, and they did it by completely surrendering their life to this exercise plan and a very regimented weight loss process. Unfortunately, every single one of those patients that lost the weight gained it back. The problem that was hiding behind this clogged artery is the same one hormone that's hidden, that they sometimes don't even know what the name of it is or how it works. That nasty little devil of a hormone that's gone wild inside their arteries is insulin. Let me show you a, a study here that says, well, how high is their insulin and what's it gonna take to reverse it when people are insulin resistant? Insulin resistance is having clogged arteries. So if you're watching this and you wonder, am I insulin resistant? You got there through clogged arteries. When we took patients like you and locked them behind a, a, an exam room door, actually we put them in a hospital for several weeks and said, you can't have anything to eat. You can have water and minerals only. And during that time, we watched what their insulin did. That insulin started out really high and it took over four weeks before that insulin finally dropped to a relatively normal number of 10. Unfortunately, as soon as they started eating again, the insulin shot right back up. So how does this insulin thing work and how can we manipulate it to work for you to reverse this cholesterol in your arteries? Well, let's take a look at healthy patients. You'll notice that insulin's measured over on the side and time is measured along the bottom. This was looking at people six hours after eating specific foods. So these healthy patients came in and we gave them food. We gave them one specific food and we made sure that they hadn't eaten for several hours beforehand, 12 to 18 hours of fasting. After these healthy patients ate carbohydrates, we checked their insulin every 30 minutes for these six hours. And in these healthy patients, it spiked way up over 100. And look at how long it took before that came back down under 20, which is relatively healthy. We're at the fourth or fifth hour before healthy people drop their insulin back to that level when they ate only carbohydrates. The next day they came in and we fed them protein, checking again every half an hour, watching the insulin not return to normal until that sixth hour. With protein, it, it took a little longer for the insulin to spike and it didn't spike as high, but it sure lasted a long time. The third day they came in and we only fed them fat. This time, again, checking the insulin and noticing that it didn't spike until the hour mark and it really returned back to normal at a couple of hours later. Well, now let's look at people like you. When that uh, unhealthy patient shows up and we'd fasted them for the same amount of time and fed them the same amount of carbs, their insulin spiked up even higher than the uh, healthy patients did. But most strikingly, it did not return to normal. Even six hours later, their insulin was still way too high. This was making heart disease the whole during that time. When they ate the protein, again, it spiked, not quite as sharp, but did not drop back to normal. 
And even when these patients ate the lowest stimulus food for insulin, that would be fat, and they only had fat, the spike of their insulin was still strikingly high and did not return to baseline uh, during those six hours. So when patients have health problems that look a lot like uh, heart disease, and it's because that cardiovascular disease has been growing for many years, we link it to insulin. And insulin is the one thing that connects these disease processes along the way. I don't know where you are in the process of building your heart disease, but it is most certainly related to insulin. When patients come in and say, Doc, the fat that you're asking me to eat, isn't that the same fat that's found in my cholesterol-filled artery? The answer is no. The fat you consume comes into your body and then is a product of what is going on with your chemistry. The most important hormone or chemical that you control to put that cholesterol in your artery is in. But if you are one of the unfortunates that has had a blockage and then had a heart attack, thank God you're living to watch this video. But the only way that you're going to take care of disease like this is through something called autophagy. Don't know what autophagy is? Click the next video. I'll teach you there.